everyone. Welcome to Cross Street. I'm Ted. And I'm Kim. It's time to review our Cross Street values. Don't forget to shout out the responses. Here we go. Number one, love God. Why? Number two, love people. Why? And number three, do your best. Why? And our last one, have fun. See? Why? <laughs> Awesome job. Let's stand up and worship Jesus together, okay? Okay.
Ready? I am so hungry today. Why are you so hungry? Haven't you eaten? No, I skipped breakfast this morning. Well, no wonder you're hungry. Why would you skip breakfast? I was just being too lazy. I mean, that's how I live. I didn't really do much this morning. Just woke up, got dressed, and that's it. That, that's it? Did you brush your teeth or read your Bible? Nope. I skip both of those things and breakfast too. Do you want to smell my breath? Mm, no. Okay. Ted, if you skipped breakfast and reading your Bible, you did not get fed physically or spiritually. That's not a good thing. Get fed spiritually? What does that even mean? Well, let's ask our friends at Connect HQ. I bet they can explain it way better than I can. Okay. Mm, probably has a beard. Moses? No, older Old Testament. Abraham. Mm, built the ark. Noah? Yeah. Why didn't you just start with that? I don't know. Hey, Alyssa. Do you want to play a game with us? No time. I got my drum, I got my spoon, I got my balloons. I'm busy parading. What was that all about? No idea. But if there's a parade, I want in. Hey, Alyssa, wait up! We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Dot, and this is how we celebrated Leftover Day. I'm glad you're back. How's your Thanksgiving dinner with your dad? It was fine. Is this the first Thanksgiving since your parents got divorced? Yeah, like I said, it was fine. Where is everybody? Most people had the day off and departed a while ago. There's just a few of us leftovers. Dot, so that game got me thinking about Noah. And so I reread the story of Noah in the Bible and look at this crazy detail I've never noticed before. Hey, Alyssa, how was your Thanksgiving? It was fine. Great! Yeah. Do you want to join our Leftover Day Parade? The Leftover Day what? Uh, it's a day full of leftover parades and leftover songs and leftover games. I have never heard of this day before. Oh, it's from our field office in San Francisco. Maybe it's Nick! Hey guys, Nick here. San Francisco is beautiful. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Tell Mike I ate a turducken. What's a turducken? It's a turkey stuffed with a duck stuffed with a chicken. It's three meats in one. Anyway, Jenny came up with a problem that I need some help with. I'll let her tell you. Well, when I go to church, I hear all this stuff about how I should read the Bible. But when I actually pick one up, it just seems boring and I don't know where to start. Do I really have to read the Bible or could I just try harder to be a good kid? I showed the Bible app for kids to Jenny, but I was wondering if you could help us create a great connection transmission to help us out. Thanks for your help. I'm so glad that Nick is loving San Francisco. And he ate turducken. <laughs> he really did it. I'm so proud. I can relate to Jenny. I used to think the Bible is boring, too. Honestly, I haven't been reading mine much. I've just had a lot going on. But the Bible is so exciting. Even when I reread the story of Noah, I saw things I'd never seen before. Reading the Bible is like a Thanksgiving feast for your spirit. It's like we need the Bible to stay healthy. We have to eat God's Word every day. That is a great point. 
The point link is eat God's word every day. Point link acquired. All right, now, uh, Alyssa, you can look for a Bible link, and me and Dot can work on a verse link. Okay, I will. Awesome. That leftover day parade didn't really cheer me up. Maybe I can just sit around and write some leftover day songs. <laughs> leftover day. Before you put up your Christmas decorations, it's leftover day across the nations. Nation. Have you seen my favorite? There they are. Hmm. These are my utensils for cooking, not noisemakery. Sorry, Elaine. Chef Elaine. Chef Elaine. We were having a leftover day parade. Well, if you're looking for leftover food, I've got plenty from yesterday's feast. More than I can fit in the fridge. That's perfect! We could use it for our leftover day feast. You can't have non-stop feasts two days in a row. What is this? Connect HQ or Feast Central? Bring me the food. You won't have to prepare anything. I'll take care of everything. I'll start hauling it up here. Leftover day, leftover day. The singing isn't helping me. I'm still bummed out. I'm sure preparing the leftover day feast will help. I think. We need to eat God's word every day. But the Bible isn't a pizza. How do we get the healthy food of God's word into our bodies? Well, by memorization and study. You can't just read the Bible, you have to apply it. Isn't there a verse about bread that talks about this? Well, probably. Uh, let me search bread in the Bible app. Oh, there it is, Matthew 4, 4. Let's memorize it. That way, God can bring it back to our mind when we need it. All right, well, say it like this. Matthew 4, 4. Matthew 4, 4. But Jesus told him. But Jesus told him. People do not live by bread alone. People do not live by bread alone. But by every word that comes from the mouth of God. But by every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, the Bible just isn't some old book. It's the word of God. And it's full of amazing stories. I hope Alyssa found a good Bible link. <laughs> Me too. Hey, Alyssa. Any luck? Oh yeah, I'm gonna make a huge sandwich for the feast. No, I meant any luck finding a Bible link for Jenny. Oh, uh, no, not yet. I'll get to it, I promise. All right, just checking. We found our verse link. So whenever you've got something, let us know. Okay, I'll let you know. Okay. This means something. This is important. All right, so I uploaded the point link and the verse link. Where's Alyssa? She's working on a sandwich in the lounge. Oh, sandwich? Go on. She seems really obsessed with leftover day. Yeah, this is her uh, first Thanksgiving since her parents got divorced and for people with Broken families or no family at all, holidays can be tough. Behold, the ultimate leftover sandwich. It's beautiful. Where'd you learn to stack a sandwich like that? Mike talks a lot about sandwiches. Sometimes I listen. Well, if you ever want to transfer to the foodies group, there'll always be a spot for you. <laughs> Chef Elaine, this turkey's amazing. Thanks. I didn't get to have turkey this year. No turkey on Thanksgiving? Where I come from, that's a crime. Yeah, it was kind of rough. My dad didn't feel like cooking. I always feel like cooking. Not only that, but I missed out on all of our usual family Thanksgiving traditions. 
We always used to watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade and then sing this ridiculous Thanksgiving Day song. And then we'd all play Gobble Gobble. Gobble Gobble? It's a really cheesy board game, but we all had fun playing it together as a family. So planning a leftover day makes you feel better. Actually, I thought it would, but no matter what I try, I still feel empty and kind of sad. Sounds like you need a healthy meal. Well, the sandwich should help. No, I mean for your spirit. When's the last time you spent some time with God? Maybe reading your Bible or praying? Probably right. Man does not live on bread alone. Thanks, Shefeling. I memorized all the verses about food. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, I was just reading Romans 8. When my parents got divorced, it was my favorite chapter to read. It's full of promises about how nothing can separate us from God's love. It always makes me feel better. Do you think it's a Bible link we can use for Jenny? Actually, I think I know a better one. There's a story about Jesus when he was a little boy. Here, check it out. It says it's 66 picks mixed up into one The book's about God, who He is and what He's done It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside It's alive, a prize to hide in your heart and in your mind Old Testaments are set up for the big event When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement It's history, His story, whose story, God's story Let it blow up all the pages, let this show go live Let his word explode from this video into your life Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem to celebrate a holiday called the Passover with friends and family. And when Jesus was 12 years old, he got to go with them. Come on, sweetie, it's time to go. I'm here, Mom. Did we get everything, honey? Uh, I think so. Did we get everything? Yes, sir, we got everything. Jerusalem was very crowded because everyone there was celebrating the Passover. After the big celebration was all over, Mary and Joseph left with a huge crowd. They thought Jesus was with them, but Jesus actually stayed behind. I think God wants me to go to the temple to spend time with him. And why not? After all, he is my father. At first, Mary and Joseph didn't notice because they thought he was with the rest of the large crowd. But when night came, they realized Jesus wasn't with his friends and family, and they freaked out. Have you seen Jesus? No. Wasn't he with his friends? I thought so, but maybe he got lost along the way. Brilliant. I've just lost God's son. Excuse me, have you seen Jesus? After three days of searching, Joseph and Mary found Jesus in the temple. He was listening and talking to the priests and teachers of God's law, and they couldn't believe how wise Jesus' answers were. Son, why did you leave us? We've been looking for you for three days. Why did you need to look for me everywhere? Didn't you know I'd be here? Where I could worship my father and be about his business? You see, even as a child, Jesus made the wise choice to seek God and spend time with him above anything else. The Bible says that Jesus went back home and obeyed his parents in everything he did, and Jesus continued to grow taller, but he also grew in wisdom and was blessed by God and people. It's easy to forget that people who lived when Jesus was on earth didn't have a Bible at home. They had to go to the temple to learn about God. That's exactly what Jesus did. He fed his spirit by spending time with wise people and learning about God. I didn't realize how hungry I was for God's word until I ignored it. The Bible is a book that gives life. I think holidays are gonna be rough for a little while, but this helps. And we'll make some new traditions. I'd like that. <laughs> Thank you.
What is this masterpiece? Alyssa made it. God, I want to eat it, but I kind of want to put it in a museum. She was helping me take care of the leftovers. I overestimated how much food we would need, and I can't fit it all in the refrigerator. I don't have any money, but what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills developed over a long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for leftovers like yours. Follow me. I will find them, and I will eat them. Hey, we got an answer back from HQ. Check it out. Hi, my name's Alyssa, and I'm part of Connect HQ. We found this answer for you. The Bible tells us this in the book of Matthew. Matthew 4, 4. But Jesus told him, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We need God's word every day to stay healthy. It's amazing to live in a time when we can easily get a physical copy of the Bible or through downloading an app. Jesus had to go to the temple to feed his spirit and discuss God's truth. Now, truth is available to us every day. We can read the Bible and learn about God anywhere we are. When I felt empty and sad, I tried filling my spirit with parades and songs and food, but nothing helped. That's because my spirit was hungry. But when I stopped to spend time with God in His Word and through praying, I felt healthy. Worship, prayer, and reading the Bible are habits that help us live healthy spiritual lives. The Bible isn't just a book. It's full of poetry, amazing stories, colorful characters, and promises from God. We need to eat God's Word every day. I hope this helps, and I hope you spend some time reading your Bible today and every day. Thanks for your question, Jenny. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Do you think you could show me how to download the Bible app? Of course. Uh, not a friend of lions. Uh, uh, Daniel. Yes. <laughs> oh. Hey, Mike. Oh. We saved this sandwich for oh. you. No more leftovers. <laughs> Ugh. Wow, I didn't realize how important it was to stay fed, both with food and with reading your Bible. It is so important. We can't keep growing and knowing God without studying His Word. You're right. I think I need to go back home and eat so that I can be fed physically and spiritually. That is a great idea, Ted. Just don't actually eat your Bible. Oh, yeah, good point. See you guys next week. Bye! Have you spent time eating or feeding on God's word lately? Do you know what the story of scripture is? I want to tell you about it. The big story in scripture tells us that from the beginning of time, all people are sinners. And sin is anything we do that's disobedient to God. There's a lot of ways that we can be disobedient. And sin requires the punishment of death. That can be kind of scary, but there's good news. We aren't stuck in our sin forever because Jesus came. God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to pay the price for our sin. Jesus died on the cross and he rose three days later. And when he did that, he took on the punishment for our sin. He paid the price and by placing our trust in him, we can experience eternal life with God and freedom from our sins. That's the big story in scripture that God has sent Jesus and God cares a lot about us. That's why reading scripture is so important. Scripture also tells us that we can place our trust by admitting that we're sinners, that we need to be rescued, by believing that Jesus has paid the price and made a way for us to trust and love God more, and then to committing to obedience, to following God's commands each and every day. And when we do that, that's when we experience freedom from our sins. You can join me in trusting God every day, and you can do that by praying along with me right now. God, I know that on my own I'm a sinner, and I know that on my own I cannot rescue myself from my sin. 
But I believe that you sent Jesus, who is your one and only son. And I believe that you sent him to die on the cross, to take on the punishment for my sin, and to rise from the dead three days later. Thank you for defeating death. Thank you for defeating sin. And thank you for making a way for me to have hope and to love you more. Would you help me to remember every day how much that I am loved and to learn how to love you more? Would you help me to know how to study your word in the Bible? Would you help me to want to feast and eat on your word each and every day? And would you help me to share this love with others? It's in your name we pray. Amen. The first step that we want you to take, if you just prayed that prayer, is to tell others about it. So tell a parent, tell a leader, tell a friend, and have them help you get in contact with us so we can celebrate with you and we can give you some resources to help you in your next steps. We can't wait to hear from you and we'll see you next week on Cross Street.